to start out, uh, we welcome uh, Cliff, uh, V6PLC. Um, considerable expertise in digital modes, it seems like. Uh, we had him last November explained uh, DMR to us. Um, among other things, he's also Secretary of Calgary Communications Club. And uh, tonight, he's agreed to help us uh, understand Echolink. Cliff, how if you uh, take it away with your uh, discussion? Well, thank you very much for asking me. Yeah, I fell into Echolink. Uh, someone said, gee, it would be nice if we had Echolink on the CCC repeater. And I said, oh, I can look at that. And uh, found out that it really wasn't that terribly difficult. So I started with my 857 and my signal link and uh, a little netbook computer and got that all working and we had Echolink. And I thought, well, I don't want to tie up the 857 and my netbook permanently. So I started working on a project using a Raspberry Pi and a little two meter mobile that I had surplus and months, I guess about a year later, finally got that all working. So that's what we're gonna look at tonight is the Raspberry Pi and SVX Link software. Okay, Echo Link presentation. <laughs> so Echo Link, and there's the URL for the main website, is one of several ways available to the amateur radio community of connecting analog repeaters and users together. You can also connect digital <laughs> repeaters together into this too, I, I know. Other ways include IRLP and All Star Link. And there's some URLs there for the other systems that uh, are gaining in popularity. Well, All Star Link, I think is the most recent one. And IRLP, I think, was the first one before Echo Link even. Likewise, digital repeaters and users have DMR, D Star, and Fusion networks to choose from. All of these linking systems exist to make it possible for hams to talk to each other without the need for expensive HF radios, high towers, and big antennas. All of them rely on voice over internet protocol, otherwise known as VoIP, in one way or another. So Echolink makes it possible to talk to other hams all over the world with just an inexpensive handheld radio, as long as the repeater or a radio that is attached to the Echolink network is within range. You can also connect to Echolink from a computer and they have softwares for Windows, Mac and Linux, a tablet or a smartphone. There's Android and Apple Pro apps for the phones. So you don't even have to have a radio to uh, get onto Echolink and talk to people all over. They do ask you to prove you have a valid ham license though. Is that because it may be going out on RF at yes. another end? Yeah. It's easy to get validated. Basically, you just send your your credentials or your license uh, via email into the echolink.org. Yeah. So echolink node types user nodes, these are the computer, tablet, and smartphone connections used by individuals without a radio connection. Link nodes, these are nodes that interface a radio to echo link. And repeater nodes, these are nodes that interface a repeater to echo link either directly, the repeater is connected to the internet at the site or remotely, repeater is connected to the internet through a remote connection to the internet. And then there are conference servers, bridges. These servers are designed to support large continuous conferences with more than 99 other nodes connected to each other. So there's a few of those. There is a charge if you want to run a conference server just to help defray the expenses. 
So this is a picture of how the VA6CAL remote Echolink connection is set up. So out at the, the CBC site, uh, we've got the DR1X repeater and the antenna up the tower and then over the RF link to the antenna that I have here. It's a vertically polarized two element Yagi pointed at the repeater site. I happen to have one. It was easy to put it up. So the radio I'm using is an HTX 242 on low power because with the Yagi and my location, it doesn't take much to get into the repeater reliably. And then I built a home, a home built in interface with the TX and RX audio and the push to talk going through it. And we have Raspberry Pi. Dum, 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 dum. Raspberry Pi 3B computer with a USB sound card plugged in and GPIO pin for push to talk control. And it's running the SVX link software. And from the Raspberry Pi, I've got an ethernet cable that goes to the router and then out from here to the internet. And uh, once it hits the internet, then it'll connect to the Echolink server. So that, that, that home built interface is that's something similar to a signal link or uh, a uh... Yeah, it's not that complicated. I'll show you a picture in a bit. Okay. So how are connections made? So the echo link addressing servers keep track of all the active nodes and their IP addresses. There is also a validation server that checks to ensure that any node that requests access has a valid call sign. When a node, computer, repeater, or link requests a connection to another node, the address server will indicate whether the requested node is online and what IP address to use to connect to it. At that point, the nodes connect directly to each other and the addressing server is free to answer the next request. If you are familiar with dynamic domain name servers, then the Echolink addressing server performs a similar function. So it's constantly keeping up with, uh, is it online? And what IP address can I use to tell people to connect to it? So it's checking constantly to see if the IP address has changed, which for a home user, can happen from time to time, depending on your internet service provider. So this is pretty much common to any Echo Link setup. Uh, the software talks to the server a request comes in, goes to the server and says, how do I get to this node? Uh, the addressing server says, here's the IP address. And then the software goes and makes the direct connection to that node based on the IP address. So the server basically just hands out the address information and then it's out of the connection. It, it's not there all the time. Unlike with, uh, with DMR. With DMR, the server's in the audio path all the time. So this is kind of cool. So what I found out was there is a program called SVX Link, and it works on Linux. And there's also a version for the Raspberry Pi. And I said, aha, this is exactly what I want so I can have my 857 and my netbook back. So SVX Link Server is a general purpose voice services system. It started out as an Echolink application for Linux in 2003 and has evolved from there. And there's the website for it if you wanted to know about, about it and how to, how to get the stuff. 
SVX Link is command line based, so it doesn't require a graphical user interface. So you don't need a lot of horsepower in your Raspberry Pi. I did end up installing it on an R, on my raw Pi using the Raspbian OS with GUI, so I could use the graphical interface to aid in testing and troubleshooting. What can I say? I've been too long into Windows and the troubleshooting with the command line, I, I was finding difficult. <laughs> so through the, the RAS being on there, and uh, with that, I was able to use FL Digi to do some troubleshooting for the audio interface and the push to talk control. And it just made it easier to make things work. So this is the little interface box I ended up with. First I breadboarded it and then uh, made this up. So just one NPN transistor for the push to talk lead. Uh, let's see, the blue and red wires connect to the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. That's these and they control the push to talk. The black cables go to the mic and speaker jacks on the USB sound card. And then the white cable connects to the speaker and mic jacks of the two meter radio. I didn't include any isolation for the audio lines and I haven't had any problems, but there's certainly enough room in the little box to uh, add it on if uh, it was necessary. There's also room to add a transistor and resistor for a COR line to a GPIO pin if desired. I didn't bother, the Vox seems to be working okay. And I didn't want to dig into the guts of the two meter radio to find the uh, COR signal. But the Vox seems to work pretty well. I think one thing that might help that is the repeater puts out the 110.9 tone on the output side. So I think that may help keep the, the box triggered. So this is the picture of the completed setup. Two meter radio, the Raspberry Pi, the interface box, USB port, ethernet cables going to the router and away we go. The unplug jack is for the fan in the Raspberry Pi. It's a little noisy, so I often leave it unplugged. It doesn't seem to run hot, so that's been fine. Uh, having it all down in the basement doesn't hurt either. It stays cooler. Because SVX Link is multi-purpose, there are many, many settings to work through, primarily in the SVX Link config file. It took me a few months of reading and experimenting before I came up with a combination of settings that worked the way I wanted. And there's a link online for a document that it goes through and explains, mostly explains <laughs> what the settings are. So if anybody wants to try making their own node, I will send you a copy of my working SVX link config file so you don't have to start from scratch. Those are the kinds of things that it tells you how it works when it's supposed to work, but not what to do when it doesn't. Yeah, it says this setting controls that and exactly how it applies to your particular situation. And the other thing is because SVX link will do multiple things, so it'll do the echo link. You can also do it for um, bridging radios so you can hook up to I think four radios can be hooked up and and tied together in various configurations um, and there's multiple network connections that you can have on the internet side of it too so uh, like I say if you wanted to uh, link a two meter radio to a 70 centimeter radio, you could use this software and, and the Raspberry Pi to set that all up. 
SVX link and older radios. SVX link can create its own subaudible tones, which means it will work with older radios that cannot create their own tones. A higher quality sound card might be needed for the lower tones, but the $15 one that I use works for the one 10.9 hertz tone required to get into VA6CAL. So if you have an old radio kicking around and you can't get tone for it, don't despair. It may be useful as a, as a node for SVX link, either echo link or, or uh, linking repeaters together other ways. So maybe don't junk your old radio just yet. SVX will work as an interface for All Star as well, will it not? Yes, I think it will. And uh, I just looked at the All Star Link software, and it will also do Echo Link. Yeah, so will so will the IRLP stuff. It, it, it has a a bridge so, for for uh, Echo Link as well. Oh, okay. So I just downloaded the All-Star software and, and got it running on another Raspberry Pi, at least enough to look at it. I did that this afternoon. So it looks like it could be useful. So it might be easier depending on what your application is than what the SVX link is. I'll have to play with it some more. It gives me some to occupy myself with. <laughs> the All-Star link is easier to bring up multiple bridges. You don't have to pay for, for a conference server. There's lots oh, of them. Okay. You just take your pick. Um, so this was something I was always unclear on. What's the difference in IRLP and Echo Link? Are they the same thing? No, no, they're different. IRLP requires a proprietary audio board in order to function. Uh, it's not super expensive, but it's it, it controls bandwidth on the audio, controls how things link together. So. It is proprietary, so is the software, but you get the software for free if you buy the board. You can buy the board uh, as a complete kit with a Raspberry Pi, or you can just buy the board separately. Yeah. The, joy, the joy of running all three in Medicine Hat. <laughs> Trust me. So this is my Echo Link Pi notes that I use to help me keep track of what was going on. And if anybody wants to try it, uh, I'll send you a copy of this too. So I installed the Parrot module. I didn't bother with the voicemail module. Uh, I did note because of the remote node configuration, the Parrot module goes into a loop until you drop it. So, uh, because of uh, the radio being here, and then it would, I could send into the repeater, it would uh, repeat it back out into the node. The node would then echo it back out to the, through the radio here to the repeater, which would repeat it back. And so you had a continual cycle until you hit uh, the disconnect uh, DTMF button. But otherwise, it worked fine. <laughs> Have you disabled the squelch tail on the repeater? No. No, and I've noticed that uh, it sees it as uh, as distortion. The squelch tail all the time. It calls it distortion. Is it? Um, is there a, an estimate of how many echo link nodes are on SVX link? Uh, versus, uh, I think the, the original was uh, that it, uh, the Echo Link runs on Windows 10. So you'd, the server software is Windows 10. I don't know. I don't. I don't think there's any way to distinguish what uh, what kind of service it's running in at the, on at the end, the user. When you connect to SVX Link, it will tell you that it's an SVX link node. Uh, yeah, but at the, at the other end, when you're connected to the other end of the echo link, it won't tell you what. Yeah, I, no, I won't tell you what's the other end. Last time, 
there was something in the order of 30,000 Equilink servers more or less active at any given time. Cliff, can you, uh, I'm uh, completely green on Echolink. Can you uh, go back and do a little bit of a primer of what Echolink is? Uh, how do you talk to other places? How do you identify okay. who you want to uh, connect to? Let me. Okay, um, if you have a radio handy and you can go on to uh, VA6CAL on 147.135 or VA6RP on 444.750 and we'll see if we can tie the two of them together. If you have an echo link application on your phone or computer and you want to jump on to either one of those uh, you can do that as well and we'll see if we can connect a node one node to the other is there anyone that has your radio and uh, uh, computer nearby each other mine are uh, in separate places I didn't think about doing that together. Um, I do. Uh, I could probably crank it up a bit so you guys could hear it. Uh, give me a minute. We, we do. My, my computer here as well on the radio. Okay. Um, I'm tuning into VA6CAL. Okay. That I want to. Let me know if uh, so uh, you want me to mute. V6 PLC. Whoops, that's not going to work. Okay, I'm hitting the other one. Let me go back. Might be a bit of echo, about a half second echo. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. V6 PLC demoing echo link. So two number signed activate it. Okay, so you can see in the log here, the 287151 number sign, which connects the two together. Okay, so if I now switch. Why did it do that? Okay, let's try that again. Connecting to Victor Alpha 6, Romeo, Papa, repeater. 
V6PLC is demoing echo link, tying two repeaters together. Did that come out on your end, bud? Yeah, I heard it. You guys heard it? Yeah, I, I can hear it coming out on my radio here as well. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over to the other end, the RP end. V6PLC is mm -hmm. demoing echo link. Mm -hmm. So that should have come out for you guys to hear if this works right. E6 PLC testing. Hmm. Spurious audio packet received from something. Okay, uh, so VA6GOK is on the repeater with his iPhone. VA6GOK from V6PLC demoing echo link. Are you copying over? Very good. Thank you very much. Where, where is GOK located? Uh, I'm located in Calgary. Over. He's on this uh, a Zoom call. Uh, okay. Oh, there. There he is. <laughs> Okay, so um, Warren, if you want to go ahead and explain a little bit about how you've been using it. Uh, oh, sure. Okay. Well, I'm a I'm a neophyte uh, to the to the Echolink. Um, my main motivation was to be able to talk to my dad, who's from Grand Prairie. He's a ham. He's a ham up in Grand Prairie. V six. Uh, MLS, Mike Lima Sierra, and he's in a senior's residence with uh, no radio, um, no antenna, no radio, uh, but he is a bit tech savvy, so um, we were able to uh, install Echolink on his uh, computer up there, and I have it installed on mine here, and we weren't quite sure how it all worked, um, so initially I uh, looked it up on the repeater book and found that there is a VE6 uh, PLC, <laughs> Echolink uh, repeater here in Calgary, which is Cliff, of course, and it's tied into the VE, VA6 CAL repeater on the CBC tower, which is really close to where I live. So there's a good connection there. And uh, so as uh, Cliff was saying, it's pretty easy to access uh, Echo Link. Um, first of all, you need to get validated. Uh, so you just basically send your license into the validation uh, uh, email address at uh, echolink.org. And within a couple of days, they came back and uh, said that I was validated. And uh, so I, I have my own uh, Echo Link node now. I show up in the list of uh, well, multiple thousands of nodes here but uh, so now uh, the next thing I did was uh, try to uh, contact my dad up in Grand Prairie through Echolink but I discovered that uh, Grand Prairie does not have an Echolink node they did have at one point but I guess the fellow uh, has got it temporarily uh, dismantled uh, so unfortunately I can't call into the Echolink repeater in Grand Prairie it would be pretty easy for me to do it. I could do it uh, two ways. Uh, one way is uh, I'm just on my computer, on my on my laptop, and I see a, uh, I don't know exactly how many nodes there are here, but you can see all the repeaters and all the links 
and it just scrolls on forever. And you can uh, narrow it down by country. Uh, the United States has got uh, 2,613 uh, currently online and uh, Canada's got 242 repeaters and links online. Uh, so yeah, I, I connected into uh, uh, the VE6 PLC repeater with my computer, uh, which basically lets me call out uh, through the uh, VE6 uh, CAL and I'm on the air. And uh, so I knew that worked. So I told my dad in Grand Prairie how to connect to the uh, VE6 PLC repeater here in Calgary. Uh, so he's on his computer. He's also got it installed on his uh, his iPad. So there's both a, a Windows and a, uh, uh, I think there's an Android app and an iPhone app. And uh, so it's it's quite easy to access. So he connected into V6 PLC from his computer in Grand Prairie. And I can hear him on the radio here in Calgary. And... Uh, so I was able to carry on a conversation with him. I'm on the radio and he does, he's on his computer. Um, and we experimented around a little bit more. We uh, wanted to see, well, what else could we do? I, I thought I'd try connecting to uh, computer to computer to see if that works, which isn't really ham radio, I know, but um, I, I did connect to another fellow who was on his computer in, in uh, Saskatchewan that's uh, uh, VE5NED. Um, I just randomly selected him on the list of uh, contacts here, or nodes here in Canada, and he uh, responded. So we carried on a conversation that way. But he's also got a, uh, a repeater that he uses in Saskatchewan. So I know it works, uh, you know, computer to radio and radio to computer and computer to computer. And uh, I guess you really have to see the Echolink software to uh, get a feel for how it all works. It's pretty easy just to uh, do a download and an install, and you, you get access to all the um, all the repeaters and links. So that's that's been my experience so far. It's pretty easy to use. So AWRL put out this book. And it covers uh, IRLP and Echo Link and uh, the Asterisk software, which is uh, what All Star is based on. I think the current edition includes All Star specifically. So if you're interested in pursuing it, this uh, gives you lots of good information. So, um, well, I can uh, I can show you the this all the settings if if you're interested it's not terribly exciting until you actually start trying to make something work but uh, but otherwise yeah uh, any uh, any questions for me or Warren what is the etiquette of uh, using it if you uh, look up the the list um, I call into VA six I tune into VA6 CAL. Um, I have to put in some DTMF tones to point to some other um, repeater somewhere in the world. Is that the uh, the way yeah. that you do it? Um, the way it's set up here is uh, two number sign. It activates the echo link node, so it'll start listening. Then you just punch in the node numbers, followed by the number sign. It will then look up that number and see what it is, verify that it's online, tell the, uh, the software at this end how to connect to it, what the IP address is, and it'll make the connection. And once you've got a connection, um, at this end, it'll announce that you've made a connection and announce that you're there, see if anybody's listening. So then you do a uh, CQ, CQ call? 
exactly. Uh, just, uh, just your call sign and that you're listening or see if there's anybody out there to talk to. What I, what I have done is uh, when I first, uh, or before I connect to the Echolink uh, repeater here, V6 uh, PLC, I uh, just say that I'm uh, connecting, I'm going to connect to Echolink, just announce it first. And then the, I do the two number sign as Cliff mentioned, type in the node and uh, it'll connect on the other side, on the, uh, the target node, wherever that may be in the world. And uh, then I just identify myself on that repeater as uh, I'm just saying V6WMS uh, uh, has connected via Echolink and is monitoring and standing by. And I've gotten callbacks that way. And if you're doing it from a computer, uh, you can connect wherever and uh, the computer interface has a, either the space bar, or there'll be a button push on, push off for the push to talk. So you can key up and announce yourself and see if anybody's listening. And then remember to release the push to talk <laughs> and see if somebody comes back to you. Cliff, there's a question from um, Gokan. Oh, okay. In the chat. Yes. Um, if you're from the HT to a repeater or a link radio, you can go to another repeater or another link radio, and the person at the other end can be on an HT. Can he hear me or do I need to type that? <laughs> uh, he's, uh, he's muted, but uh, he should be able to hear you. Gokan, are you hearing? He said yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty flexible so um, some people just have the link radio set up so it's not connected to a repeater it just gives anybody in range of their radio an access portal um, and you can go computer to computer as Warren mentioned or any combination so as long as you can get in to talk to the server to get the the uh, IP address and verification that it's online, you can pretty much go anywhere. And uh, you may not know uh, if the person you're talking to is on a radio or a computer. They could be uh, connecting by computer into uh, into a radio or not. You don't know. If, uh, if you're on a computer, it will show you this, uh, the suffix. It'll give you the call sign and either nothing, which means they're on another computer, or dash R, which means it's a repeater, or dash L, which means it's a link radio. radio. Right, and yeah. On echolink.org, uh, you can pull a tab on the left-hand side, and it will give you a list of every one of the active echolink uh, nodes that's available either in Canada or or globally at any given time. And if you look across from the call sign, it'll give you the uh, digit, the, 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 the number that you're going to enter to get to that node. One of the busy ones is the Toronto VA3SF. And it's been around for forever. It's 6398. I use that one often enough. Some of the, the, the like your R, uh, your repeater in Calgary is 287151, so it's a little farther down the list as far as first registered. <laughs> yeah, and mine is even farther. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so is mine. <laughs> but yeah, you can basically, with your handheld, if you're accessing within range of CAL or RP, you can get around the world with your handheld. 
And you, you've set it up for double pound sign for, for the wake up to wake up the node? Uh, two echo or two number sign. Okay. It, it, it it medicine, that it's just a single pound or single number sign. Yeah, oh, okay. it, it's just the number two and then the number sign. No, just the, just the, the the number sign first. Uh, do it twice there in Calgary, uh, and then, then enter whatever your node no, number is that you're looking to connect with. It's uh, yeah, it's hard to explain because it's uh, it's the numeric uh, number two followed by the hatch symbol. So it's two hatch. It's not two hatches. <laughs> to get in, that's the uh, that's. Okay. So it's, it's it's a number two and then the pound sign. Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if you want to go to the CCC website on the items of interest page, there's a bit of a write up on the repeater, including how to work with the echo link node. That's ccc.myrac.ca. Cliff, you were saying that, or I, I thought you mentioned at one point that there was a, a group of people on your Echolink no node coming in from Germany and you were carrying on a conference. There's someone in town here, uh, what is it? B6KAG and he's frequently connecting to uh, a node in Germany. Uh, he never seems to be able to talk to them. They talk to each other and he'll listen for a while. And he's also brought up some nodes in Yugoslavia, but I don't, I haven't caught him where he's actually heard anybody there. But the, the repeater in Germany that he's connecting to seems to be quite busy. But uh, yeah, that, uh, yeah. Uh, just as a, kind of a small little thing I wanted to mention. I was looking at buying a mobile rig for the car um, about probably about uh, two months ago now. And I was looking at Yesu Kenwood ICOM and the Kenwoods have got a bit of a gotcha because um, what happened was is midway through their production run, uh, they ran out of the, the DTMF generating chip and they can't get it anymore. So all their, all their radios, you can't use them to send DTMF tones uh, because they have to re-engineer re the, the line basically. So to me, I, I said that was basically a, a deal breaker because I sometimes find I need to use DTMF, right? Well, I did. Uh, so just as kind of a heads up in case anyone's thinking about buying a, a new mobile rig, uh, make sure that uh, if it is a Kenwood, that it is capable of DTMF. Um, so just as a bit of a gotcha there. Yeah, if you look on the uh, uh, GPS Central website uh, for the ads for Kenwood uh, radios, there's a, a big red disclaimer at the top that said it can no longer do DTMF. Bud, do you know how long that, how long ago that came in? Uh, apparently it's been, it's an issue with their rigs. It's been an issue with the rigs for at least a couple of months. Um, when I was looking at buying my radio from GPS world, uh, it was about roughly two months ago. And I was asking the guy about all the possibilities. Yeah. Um, I kind of like the idea of buying a Kenwood because they have a built-in TNC on them. Right. Uh, but the problem is, is that the other radios, um, they don't have that full built-in TNC, at least not like the one I was looking at. And then as soon as I saw their webpage and they said, yeah, it doesn't do DTMF, that was a big deal breaker for me. So, and that was two months ago when I was looking at buying radio. So I think what it's going to be, it's going to be like that until Kenwood um, releases a new range of radios, basically. So... How long it's been like that, I couldn't honestly tell you, but I can definitely tell you it's been going on for at least a couple of months that they haven't been able to supply radios that do DTMF, at least for their mobiles anyway. Just okay. curious, the, the full featured TNC, what are you trying to do on, on VHF? 
Oh, uh, the thought was APRS mainly. Um, would have been kind of nice if it could just beacon APRS, uh, you know, while I'm not chatting with people or something, but um, I guess that's not a possibility. I bought it. I bought an ID fifty one hundred. It does D star, but it doesn't. Uh, um, it doesn't have a full blown TNC in it. I got to use um, the D star data mode if you want to use data. So go figure. There, there's always Yesu, the the new FTM three hundred or the four hundred. I thought about it actually. Um, <laughs> the stupid thing was. Uh, not to detract from the chat, I know we're, we're kind of off topic now. Uh, oh, I'll save myself a uh, hundred bucks by buying an ICOM over a Yesu. And the, the freaking mic cable's like that big. So you had to buy a mic extension cable and it costs a hundred bucks. <laughs> so <laughs> go figure. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that first, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would it have killed them to put the microphone jack on the head of the radio? Like I used to have an ICOM IC2720H. And it had the mic jack right on the head of the radio. Yeah. So the yeah. microphone was just right there. Okay, go figure. Anyway, sorry guys, I mean, I monop monopolized the, the chat. D74H. Okay, well, uh, go can, go can. 73 then, uh, go can. Number, okay, so two hash to activate the node. Then the DTMF node number followed by the number sign of connect. Okay. I was just going to say there's probably, um, probably some of you already know, but it, probably if you ec uh, Google Echo Link, you'll find there's groups and, uh, uh, you know, different uh, interest groups that use Echo Link as for nets and this sort of thing and some of them can be quite interesting and some are quite um quite helpful they have nets for cw practice nets for technical and uh, you know some of them are down in the states there especially they're they're quite active that way so it can be a good resource and most of that most of the time you'd probably just do it offline uh, just for the entertainment and uh, education yeah, I've noticed on uh, the digital side that there's a few places that are bridging DMR to Echo Link. So you can go into Echo Link and dial up a, a node number and come out on DMR somewhere. <laughs> Here. And actually, um, I've checked into a net down in the States that's hooked up through DMR. Yeah, so there's hams are a very inventive bunch. They're doing all sorts of neat things with this stuff. It's just the fusion guys that get excited when you bridge their the, the fusion networks. Yeah, yeah. So I guess are objecting strenuously, <laughs> but I don't think it stopped a lot of people. No. Actually, like everything else, it usually just makes, it, uh, makes more people want to try it. When you hear about it, that there's something going on and they're telling you not to do it, then uh, people, well, I got to figure that out, eh? Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, don't tell a ham he can't do something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's too bad these companies are so pr pr proprietary. It's too bad they can't build one radio that does three or four things, you know, it would be great. Well, if you look at that new open spot, it it will bridge modes within the within your uh, your your little node. It'll bridge fusion to DMR and fusion to uh, to D star with one radio. Yeah, there's like Pi Star. It's tempting to build one actually, um, and yeah, you tell it what protocol you want. You know, like for example, I got my IC ninety seven hundred here and uh, you hit it with a wet noodle, uh, like very low power. It's got a little tiny antenna that sits on top of it. It's like a little pie hat, run pie star on it. And it'll actually convert D star into any other mode that you want, um, DMR, whatever. Um, I don't know if it'll do um, echo link at all, but I know that that's what people use when they want to 
when they want to convert from one standard to another. Uh, you know, I can't help but but think, I kind of wondered, you know, when I was a kid growing up and my dad said, bud, what kind of VCR should we buy? Should we buy Betamax or should we buy VHS? And I said, you should buy Betamax. <laughs> $1,500 later, uh, my dad was very proud of it and we ran it till it wouldn't run anymore. And then it's like, nah, can't wait. Yeah. So you did got I, DVDs, eh? Well, yeah. So when I'm looking at this, this radio that I have on my D star, did I, did I buy a Betamax? Cause I, I don't know. Right. Uh, did I buy a beta VCR for my car? And did I buy a beta VCR for the shack? I don't know, but we'll find out in a couple of years, I guess. Or maybe they'll all coexist and continue to be developed. I do remember though, when I RLP and echo link first, um, came out, God, it would have been about what, 2002, 2003, yeah. somewhere in there. And I remember Fred, I, I don't know how many of you guys remember Fred, uh, his call escapes me off the top of my head. He's SK now, but he was absolutely elated at, you know, um, um, that he wouldn't need an HF rig to talk all across the world. Just, he could just sit there on his handy and have a chat. And so that's how I remember it. So it hasn't, it hasn't changed really. If you think about it in all these years, um, maybe it has, I just don't know how. So anyway. Well, as, as the amateur radio operator population is aging and fewer people are having towers and big beams, this stuff makes it possible for them to go into a senior's residence or, or whatnot and still be involved in amateur radio. Otherwise, they'd be out of it. I remember IPARN, and that was a big thing in those days. That was kind of the first. It was a satellite link up. The only problem with it in those days, only one person could talk at a time. So we take turns sending signals up and you could talk to different countries, but that was very primitive long time ago. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, we've come a long way since then. Satellite would be considered too slow now. Any more uh, questions on Echolink or uh, shall we switch over to our round table? We got all the Echolink questions? Okay. <laughs> 